You don't have to be okay. Mm, go with that. Yeah. Okay, can we finally just get this over with so we can pack up and go home? <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. And it all goes back to soldiering. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I'm serious. You, it's, you, it's talk, you, you talk about Milsim, you talk about the wall, you talk about soldiering. So I'm going to talk about it for a second. Okay. And go ahead. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Saturday afternoon, we're sitting there going, bored now. So where are they? They're at the site. Where's the site? It's 11.6 kilometers that way. Mr. First goes, you want to rock in? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and it was like, like a light bulb. It was like, Ding. Yeah, we kind of look at each, we're all kind of look at each other, the three of us, and we're just like, can't really see a reason why not to. <laughs> this is Milsim, baby. So we took in kit, the tactical discipline, all the way over hill and dale, and it was like it was 25 degrees with wind chill. It was is 50, that all? Yeah, 55 mile an hour winds at that, that that last kilometer in where it just felt like you're being beaten to death yes. by people. Uh, you can quote me because it sounds so much better when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> I make you sound great. No, that was the thing. <laughs> So what, what uh, when they what did the call, you know, to clear it with, with art here? But yeah, no, you can go ahead and quote me because it just sounds so much funnier when you say it. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> Remind me. Uh, I'm not waiting around for. <laughs> oh, oh. So he gets he gets to the top of the mountain. Now we're down in the bowl, and 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 we get the radio call that hey they're coming up, and and we, we look on the top of the ridge, and there's these three little figures, and then Neil, Josh, and Clay show up, and it's like what the hell. And and Josh told hey, me, "Hey, we got an airsoft game yeah, going yeah. on. I'm not waiting around for Butcherelli to make me have fun. I'm yeah. going up there and doing it myself." Yeah. <laughs> We're going this to is a look on your face coming across, you know, the open field, and it's just like, "Who are you?" And pull down, you know, the wrap is like, first. Yeah, we've got we yeah, our our uh, our face wraps that are iced over. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the word was we get they're, they're 200 meters out. We're looking at 200. Next video, look up. Hi. Where you? Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you guys come from? That way. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun. Didn't fire a single shot at nope. a Black yeah. Nielsen event, yeah. and it was like one of the best times of my absolutely. life. Absolutely, it was. It was a total like Bravo to zero moment. <laughs> I mean, it was absolutely like escape now, of aid. Now, now think about that, guys. You guys talk a lot about Milsim and airsoft, and how many events can provide an experience without firing a BB? I got two. Yeah. And this is one because I know some great. events would have been like. That terrain? That far? Hell no. Hell no. But you know, fortunately I I've, I've met and you know, had discussions with Art and I had discussions with, with you and uh, the, you guys had some confidence in us. Well, confidence in us. You showed up and you're like, hey, we're going. I'm like, go where? <laughs> give us a stretch. So a bearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give us a bearing. Cows? Okay. I'm like, no. Boy, it's a good thing I'm a Milsim player because I can operate my freaking compass. Yeah, and, it's, and then you're gone. And I was like, and I'm like, did I just really have this compass? Are they really doing what I think they're doing? And then, oh, crap, they are doing what I think they're doing. <laughs> now, now, the other part of soldiering is leadership. You know, I led that convoy up the hill, mm -hmm. and, and, and we marched over that mountain in the snow uh, to go see if we could do this event. You guys followed suit and did your thing and provided leadership to the Alpha Company now at the bottom of the hill, and they're going, they're going those guys left. And Alpha Company, as a company, got out of their cars mm -hmm. with their gear and started marching up the mountain to get to this event. And we're talking this, and it goes like this, and this, and this, and this. Yeah, Just 11 that point down. Kilometers. Yeah. 11 point six kilometers. That a whole company of Milsimers decided, we're going to make our own We're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do it. Yeah, I've talked with Rob, the producer of the show, and um, I'd been guilty of it because you've been doing it for so long, and it's like, I really don't want to do anything. You know, it's that um, leadership roles. No one wants to step up and take it because it's such a headache. And, you know, when we were having the, the, um, the Ruck March discussion, I was like, you have so many people around waiting to be inspired and right. not enough right. willing to inspire. We gasped that conversation out at, yeah. you know, it was just like, ah, you know, 7,000 so. feet or wherever <laughs> let's, we were. Let's suck it up, maybe do something stupid, but let's see if we can inspire <laughs> anybody. And it wasn't like we've got this, like, you know, putting up the, the abacus on the pedestal. You know? <laughs> But it was just, well, I mean, and it, my fat old ass got up there. Anybody else? And the fact that Alpha Company wanted to do it, I was like, you know what? That 
that's awesome because that's what I wanted. I didn't mm -hmm. want to just be that elitist prick that's like, I'm going to freaking do this. It's like, maybe they'll follow, you know? It's like, don't wait in the cars. Well, don't, it, don't expect them to make your fun. And I hate to reinforce anything Neil says, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because because we, we've, been, we've been like this all week. No, all week no, 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 but uh, um, it goes back to player or participant. And I create the battlefield. Mm -hmm. You create the experience by how much you put into it. And you guys wanted that experience, and the game environment that I had created provided that for you. And did you know anyone was going to do that? No, no. But you used the opportunity, to right? Do so. And and that's how all my events are designed. You know, take the Cove for instance. And I hate this, but people say it's just a woods game. No, it's not. If you want that long range recon patrol, there's an objective up there, twenty five hundred feet. Scale the mountain. Go get it. If that's what you want to do, it's a radio tower on the top of a ridge line in the in the Appalachian Mountains. Wow, the Appalachian and, Mountains. And, and you want that? You that, guys, all of a sudden, it's like, yep, that's done. <laughs> you, want to, you want to do that night recon patrol where you never know where they're going to be? Mm -hmm. That's your choice. I want to do that. Okay, go. You want to, you want to do that? Uh, you know, kicking indoors all night. Do it. That's there. Yeah. Well, I think because it's the, the biggest problem, us and many other people who are and profess to be Milsim, they want to be let off the chain. A lot of times, um, the example of the chain and the target is the other players, the opponents on the battlefield. And enough water. <laughs> yeah, you need to hydrate. I don't think enough people put it into perspective when they want to be let off the chain. <laughs> when they want to be let off the chain, um, their enemy, um, this mountain that they have to tackle is the objective you know let me off the chain it's like okay i want to hike i want to do this i want to i want to dig trenches i want to dig out the trucks you know you you let everybody off the chain and go for it yeah you know up until that point to where it became a safety issue and you you um took care of the players it's like okay we've tried our you know yeah. our damnedest it's just a safety issue now so let's mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Let's re, 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 restructure no, I this. I didn't get any any feedback from the guys at the bottom of the hill when when they saw our trucks coming back down, and it was like, oh shit, yeah, what are we gonna do now? And I didn't get any feedback. Did you guys hear I, any? I actually happened to be down there because I got separated on mm -hmm. the drive back, so I got in first. Um, so I happened to be down there when you go when the caravan came over and then down, and uh, no, everyone was just like, oh, okay, there they are. No one was like, oh, damn it, if they're here, then we're not playing. Or mm -hmm. I mean, it was really just more like, good, they came back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no thankfully, one, no yeah. one was upset. No one was, yeah, there was none of that. Yeah. It was just like, okay, what kind of we're gonna come up with something else to do. I'm amazed. I am. I am very, very, and I've said this all weekend. Very, very impressed with the uh, the Midwest Pacific Northwest community out here. It's just, I, and please don't take any offense to this. Uh, Northeast, you guys that have packed it up and gone home, and these guys did it. It is pretty treacherous conditions. Yeah. Oh. When you train in snow, dirt is easy. <laughs> <laughs> So true. <laughs> this is actually the first event where I've had to change my socks in the field. The very first event. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure it's nothing new to you guys, but it's just like, up, oh, those are a little damp. It's hard to get up. Time to just stand uh, no. The key question is, did you hang your wet socks I outside did. your ruck so they could dry? Uh, not outside my ruck. Didn't go that long yet. Because okay. after that, yes, we did hike up the mountain, but we were too tired. I was too tired to participate in the rest of the event. I was just, you know, <laughs> I have a teething 10-month-old to go back to. Go, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, e even the shooter part, and, and I know it was, it was very Milsim. I came out for some of the evening game. But, I mean, for, for my, my Milsim experience was that hike. Mm -hmm. It really didn't have anything to do with the actual exchange yeah. of BBs. Yeah. Uh, not that there was anything wrong with it. I went down and watched it. and it, you know, I, I, I played for it a little while. I observed it for a little while. I hung out in your admin area for a little while. Just kind of see how everything was, was being put together. Hi. Yes. A story like when we, were, when we were out talking, waiting for the extra long cast. Um, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to leave that one alone. Um, just keep picking at that one. And then just picking at that one. No. It's a Milsim experience and how people, the, the, the participants run with it. 
And there was, you said one of the things that you enjoyed seeing was the sleep shifts. Yeah. The, the squads of the individuals rotating out. But then there was also that, that level of psychological warfare. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when something happened, they're like, go mess with the just go mess with the heads of the guys who are sleeping yeah. type deal. You know, so that's another added layer that nobody else experiences. It, it's go the, bang on the side of their Connex. Where's your century, you know? <laughs> it's leadership in, leadership in the military, sleep cycles. That's, you're taught from day one. Yeah. It's, you have to have that. And to see these mill simmers coming out there and they're going, we've got how long? that we're still going to be going. Mm -hmm. And then you walk up and you've got, it was funny, the OCs were coming up to me, they're going, dude, you're going to go out and stand up beside the side of the building. <laughs> it sounds like, sounds like a lumber mill. <laughs> but you do, and but then you see the head poke out with the rifle. And there's somebody standing there, and they're on guard. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is in there just sawing logs like nobody's business. But that one guy is up, covering everybody else's back. I, lo I love that we're standing there, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, standing around the fire barrel. And uh, this one player walks out, young young player. I think it was one of the teams that was their first mill sim mm -hmm. and definitely their first black sheep. Uh, he walks up and OCs, XOs, me, and I see this guy standing over there. He's like, do you have a question? He says, are we allowed to go back to the barracks for sleep? And I went, no. <laughs> And he just stood there for like a minute. And I repeated it. <laughs> no. And he just kind of, okay. <laughs> you did say in the briefing. <laughs> I'm going to mess with you. <laughs> you, know, you know what's interesting is that not only did we, as you politely said, you know, pulled this out of our ass, um, the, the whole event in an hour all of our shit was on the top yeah. of that mm -hmm. mountain. Yeah, you did it zero prep, zero, zero into uh, zero, 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 zero toy equipment. box. Yeah, yeah, no toy box. Actually, and we were even saying that it's like, well, what are they going to do for objectives? Because all the objective stuff they told us is up there. Yeah. Well, and that's you know? two of the OCs were. Oh, well, you're going to improvise, the, adapt, and overcome. Yeah, there, there are two of the OCs were going through the buildings, checking, making sure you fight, and they find a dummy, which weighs 300 pounds. I will stick to that till the day I die. Yeah. And they drag this thing up. Next thing, well, we're dragging this thing across the whole city, putting it at different locations for different fargos. Yeah. And these guys, they're some of the most intense firefights I've ever seen in a Milsim game. Happens over this dummy, and these guys are dragging this thing through the field, and they're just going at it. BB's going everywhere. And and the the first time I shot an, a parachute flare, flare uh, illumination. Uh, you know, we're coming up over the over the crest, yes, the, the down into the city, and uh, I told each company commander that you've got illumination. Call for it when you need it, and and poof, pops open, flies, and it gives, it, and and you could see first time mill simmers going. I can see <laughs> <laughs> like roaches, and the lights are turned on. Exactly, and uh, we used illumination all night long, and you could see it change the tactical plan. It was very good. It was one of the things I really dug when I was out there. I mean, I realize not every game can allow for you know pyro and all that stuff, but the the loom flares, the simula artillery simulators, Art the, the sh gat. shot out splash, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> bang. Yeah. My, my, and it's cool when you get both companies shooting at each other. <laughs> my favorite was uh, I think it's like you know, like a propane driven machine gun. Mm -hmm. yeah. bah, 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 bah. You could have just kept that going for a while. That was because I've always said people don't understand how loud warfare is. Exactly. If they did, there'd be a lot of wet pants. <laughs> and, uh, and soft. We, we were trying yeah. to see because the battery kept dying on us. Ah. So we're, we're over there like at one point in time, uh, Brad, one of the OCs, he's actually rubbing it with a toothbrush, with a metal toothbrush on the connectors, trying to keep the battery going. He sticks back on. And he's like, ba 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 ba, click. I wondered why I kept it. Really? Doing that. Well, that's what it was. The battery kept dying on us. It was just because the temperature was so low at that point in time. And if people, you know, if people watching think, oh, well, you know, a little gunfire in the background or a couple explosions is no big deal. Yes, it is. <laughs> the explosion. Yes, the explosion. One of the one of the guys caught me in the hallway and he goes, I want to thank you for those explosions because we're using our AIDA systems out there and we're using extra large charges. I mean, these things are just boom, it rattles everything. Your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> the walls. Because that first one you set off, I was asleep. 
and I hit my head on the wall as I come up because I didn't know what it was. And then you set off the second one, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm being attacked. And it's on. It's just go. And he's like, it was awesome. He's like, thank you. Well, the, 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 uh, the first assault, we uh, had the scenario where, you know, the Op 4 was in the city. We came in to take it, and then uh, we took it. We defended it all night, and then they wanted it back. So the first attack this morning was the op four coming back in to take the city back from us, and we prepped the target with a five volley mortar barrage, and a whoom, a whoom, and everybody's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> People were still asleep. Then the third one went off. They weren't asleep. They, they weren't asleep. asleep. <laughs> in your AAR, you had a very. Um, I'd never seen it before, but some some uh, players were allowed to share their unique moments, their oh shit or aha moments. 